Hello and welcome to the next video in this how to build your own desktop PC series. Today we're going to go over the motherboard and everything that the motherboard does and all the roles of a motherboard in a desktop PC. In my case, I've picked an Asus Tough Gaming Z790 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. I've used Asus motherboards quite a bit uh, in my previous uh, desktop PC build. I'm very, very happy with their products have been very reliable. I've never had one fail and fantastic support. That's why I'm going with this. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and I'll go through all the bits and pieces of what a motherboard does. Nice new shiny packaging. This one has built in Wi-Fi, which is an upgrade for me because my current PC, which is six years old, doesn't have that. And here is the motherboard. Nice and shiny, brand new. I'm definitely looking forward to using this. Here are the exact measurements of an ATX motherboard. It's nine and a half inches by 12 inches. So that is a standard size for an ATX motherboard. Every single ATX conformant motherboard will have that exact size. Also, an ATX motherboard will have exact locations for screw holes where you can attach the motherboard to the PC case. ATX is the most common form factor for motherboards. So if you're going to be picking your own uh, and doing a desktop PC build project, highly recommend that you get ATX. As I mentioned in my previous videos, ATX will have the most variety in your motherboard selection as well as cases. So no reason to go with anything else unless you really, really want to get fancy. But ATX, pretty standard. So highly recommend it. So now let's dig into all the sections and connectors that you have. First of all, in a standard ATX motherboard, the external connectors will be on the top left half. If you line it up like this, this is the CPU socket. This is where you're going to be attaching your central processing unit. The socket is with a specific size and every motherboard only supports a single CPU socket. There's a multiple CPU sockets depending on what processor you buy. In my case, I am buying a new 14th generation Intel i7 and therefore it has a socket type of LGA 1700. What a socket type really means is there's a specific number of connectors and a specific size that a motherboard will support. Here is a processor that I will be installing here. This is a temporary processor just to update the BIOS, more on that in a separate video. But as you can see, the size of the processor and the number of connectors on it right here matches exactly what the motherboard supports. So depending on what processor you use, you select a motherboard that has the same socket type such that it can support your processor once I install it. So that's the main key piece of a motherboard is what processor type it supports. All ATX motherboards will have a common layout that pretty much looks like this. CPU socket in the center, and then everything else lines up the way you see it here. The next very important section is your external connectors. And your external connectors will usually be on the top left side, as you see here. So this specific motherboard, it'll support Intel processors. It's an Intel motherboard. So Intel processors can support a graphics set of graphics interfaces. So you'll see here what's called a display port as well as an HDMI port. These are ports that you can use to connect your monitors to. More of that later. You'll have a bunch of USB ports, different generations. So you'll have a USB 2.0 as well as USB 3.0, different form, different connectors. So you'll see a type C as well as a type A. You'll have ethernet network, you'll have your Wi-Fi antenna, and then you'll have input and output audio jacks. Back to the standard layout, your external connectors will be top left part of the motherboard to the left of your CPU socket. The next key section of a motherboard is your RAM slots right here. This is where you will install your random access memory modules. This is the temporary memory that your computer will use as you're running it and running applications, etc. That memory does not stay, RAM or random access memory does not persist across multiple power cycles. If you turn off your computer and turn it back on, everything that was saved in these RAM modules will get erased. So RAM modules will go in here. Notice there's, there's a color coding here because there are preferred slots to use when you're running dual channels. It's also worth mentioning a couple of key points. You'll see this big connector right here. That is the main ATX power supply connector. In a previous video, my overview for the power supply, I noted that the power supply has a big 24 volt connector that goes in here. That provides the main power to the motherboard. There's also a couple of other power connectors right here. There's one right there, one right there. These connectors, these bulky 
pins are for power. So if you see those, that's we're going to be connecting that to provide power to the motherboard, which in turn also provides power to the CPU. For reference, the CPU I plan to use, which is a 14th gen Intel i7, it uses around upwards of around 150 watts. So quite a bit of power, which is expected, normal. So these power connectors provide the power necessary for the CPU, as well as all the other devices that are powered and consume power through these connectors, which are all attached to this motherboard. A couple other things I'd like to note. This chip right here, that is the Intel Z790 chip, which enables the processor to interface with the RAM, as well as other peripherals and components on this. So there's nothing we're gonna be doing with this. This is just part of the motherboard, a key and main part of the motherboard. Just for reference, that's what this is. Next, we're gonna talk about these slots right here. These are called PCIe slots. These slots are used for peripheral connectors, things like a graphics processing unit, a GPU, which is what you would need if you wanna play games or use high powered graphics. That's where these connectors come in. You can also plug in other devices such as a network interface card, um, various things that interface or communicate to the motherboard via what's called a peripheral component interconnect PCI. And then the latest version of it is the express version. So PCIe is peripheral component interconnect express. Now there are multiple generations of PCIe and most modern motherboards will support generations three, four, and five. PCIe generation five is the latest and greatest. In my case, I have an older GPU that I plan on using. I wasn't planning on updating my GPU. I have one that works great. I don't need anything more fancy. So I'm gonna use a previous generation three slot, which this board supports. So that's what these five slots are for. So PCIe Express slots will vary in size from what's called an X16, a full size, to an X1, like the smaller one. This slightly larger one is an X4, X1, X16. So PCI Express will come in different slots and you can plug in different peripherals depending on what you need. For example, GPUs will use a full X16, at least the higher end ones, while a network interface card for plugging in ethernet, that's only gonna use an X1 or something along those lines. There's a lot of different peripherals you could use that would interface to the motherboard via this PCIe Express slots, which is why different motherboards support a different set of PCIe Express and you can buy one depending on your needs. So on this note, it's worth noting that motherboards can vary anywhere from $50 all the way to $600. And oftentimes these kinds of details is what drives the price. So for example, if you found a motherboard that supports two of these X16 slots at generation five, that will likely be a higher priced motherboard because that means you can put two graphics processing units, you can put two GPUs and run them simultaneously. Why would somebody do that? You could use that for higher end graphics, uh, like a video game that uses a lot of graphics processing power. So that's a case when you would need a higher end motherboard that supports two PCIe Express X16 at Gen 5. In my case, I don't plan on doing that. And I, if I do upgrade my GPU one of those days, I'll probably only have a single GPU. You can pay a lot of money for a capability on your motherboard that you will likely never need. So I picked this motherboard because it's perfect for my needs. I don't expect to have to need anything else beyond what it has, which is why I'm paying a price that I know I will get the value return on investment for that price. So last but not least, there are lots of connectors on the outside of the motherboard that are used for connecting various things. For example, you'll have a connector for connecting serial ATA hard drives. That's the permanent storage that your desktop PC needs to store files across power cycles. If you turn off your PC, the data stored on the hard disk drive will persist. You'll also have pins that are for audio for connecting your USB ports on your case to the motherboard so they would work and interface with the system. You'll have pins for the LED lights and pins for pins for the power button and the reset button on the case and so on and so forth. There's lots of connectors that you may not necessarily need or connect for your specific purpose. We'll go through the specific ones that are needed to build the desktop PC that I have. But for reference, that's what these pins and connectors are for. It's for connecting various other parts like the case and the hard disk, etc., to the motherboard so they can interface and connect and be controlled by your motherboard. Just for reference, nothing too exciting on the back except for one key piece. You see these screw holes right here? This is around the CPU socket. Here is the CPU socket, and these holes are for attaching a heatsink to the CPU and securing it to the motherboard. More on that when we build the actual PC, so stay tuned for that. 
and we'll cover the heatsink attachment as part of the building. So that's it for an overview on a motherboard and what a motherboard includes. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.